We are very honored to join this morning with the U.S. Postal Service in hosting this first day of issue dedication ceremony for some very important new commemorative stamps that you're going to see here today that honor a few well-known guys that wear hats and boots. Some guys who influenced the way generations of Americans felt about themselves. Each of those legendary heroes has been inducted into our Hall of Great Western Performers, where Tom Selleck and Charlton Heston will be inducted here this weekend. They are indeed old friends to this institution, and we're pleased to have some of their descendants on hand today to help us share in this special commemoration of their lives. We were delighted when we learned that the United States Postal Service had selected these popular stars for their Silver Screen Cowboy series. It's important for us to remember that each one of these fine actors took very seriously the values that he would model in his career. His career in the American Western. These guys made that genre a very popular form of entertainment and one that influenced lives that go on for generations and generations. We at the National Cowboy Museum believe that they did something of lasting importance. And we hope that these beautiful stamps that you're going to see unveiled today will remind folks everywhere to revisit their message occasionally. It surely remains relevant to our culture today. The U.S. Postal Service has a long-standing tradition of honoring men and women who have helped to define our great nation. Today we continue that tradition by celebrating cowboys of the silver screen, William S. Hart, Tom Mix, Gene Autry, and Roy Rogers. While each of these men were unique personalities and from differing backgrounds, they were all cinema cowboys of legend. Two of these four cowboys began riding across the silver screen nearly a century ago. Decades from now, our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren will talk about all four of them when discussing the history of film, radio, and television. Now, born in 1864 in Newburgh, New York, William S. Hart grew up to become one of the first great stars of the motion picture western. With acting skills honed by years of experience on the New York stage and in productions across the country, Hart became one of the most popular leading men of the silent film era. Fascinated by the Old West, Hart brought a powerful presence and serious approach to early westerns. In his movies, Hart insisted on authentic depictions of Old West and its people, from their clothes to their lifestyles and their complex personalities. While riding his favorite horse, a brown and white pinto named Fritz, Hart frequently played a stalwart, tough-as-nails cowboy. Over the course of his career, Hart made more than 60 movies, including such memorable movies as Hell's Hinges, The Gunfighter, and Wild Bill Hickok. Hart's latest, last major role, Cowboy in the Epic Tumbleweeds, is generally considered one of his best performances. By the time Tumbleweeds premiered in 1925, another movie cowboy, Tom Mix, was already on the scene. Born in Mix Run, Pennsylvania in 1880, Mix wowed movie crowds and live audiences alike with his daredevil riding, expert rope handling, and unnearing marksmanship. Mix made his, made, Navy, uh, made his movie debut in 1909, playing a front buster and former U.S. Marshal in ranch life of the Great Southwest. Noted as having helped define a genre for all cowboy actors that followed him, who followed him, Mix made reported 336 films between 1909 and 1935. Most were silent features, and virtually all starred Mix in his heroic best. In 1992, Sky High, for example, he climbed the steep walls of the Grand Canyon, lit, leaped across chasms, dropped from a plane into the Colorado River, lassoed villains, and rescued a damsel in distress. I don't know whether it was on the train track or not. <laughs> in Riders of the Purple Sage, 1925, he played a Texas Ranger, searching for his kidnapped sister and helping a rancher in his fight against Russell's. 
makes his final film, a 15-episode series called The Miracle Rider, was shot in 1935, with Mix again playing Texas Ranger, by this time helping to try to help his Indian friends. Now, born in Tioga, Texas in 1907, Gene Alden entertained movie audiences for more than 20 years and won the hearts of millions of fans with his distinctive singing style and easygoing personality. We all remember Gene Alden. He was hugely successful as a radio performer long before he became the Silver Screen's first singing cowboy star in the 1930s. His horse champion often played a major role in his films, as did frequent sidekicks Smiley Burnett and Pat Buttrick. In addition to being one of the most admired cowboys to ever appear on the silver screen, Altry left behind a legacy that includes many hit records, a long-running radio show, and a successful TV series. Altry eventually went on to record more than 600 songs, including Back in the Saddle Again. Born Leonard Stott Slide, Cincinnati, Ohio, in 1911. Roy Rogers was a silver screen cowboy who sang his way to far stardom. He always played the Western hero with a warm smile, good character, and strong values. Following Gene Autry's stardom, Republic Pictures was looking for a second singing cowboy, and Rogers found his way into the studio's auditions. The young singer was signed to a seven-year contract. And within a few months, the studio had given Rogers his now famous name and the leading role in Under Western Stars, a popular film with critics and audiences alike. Hoping to capitalize on that success, Republic Pictures made the Western starring Roy Rogers, including Arizona Kid, The Yellow Rose of Texas, and My, Pil uh, My Pal Trigger, 39, 44, and 46. In 1943, he was dubbed the King of the Cowboys, a title that stuck with him the rest of his life. William S. Hart, Tom Mix, Gene Autry, and Roy Rogers, all great performers, all great cowboys. I'm really wearing two hats today, uh, or maybe Stetson's, I guess I should say. First as chair of the Postmaster General's Citizen Stamp Advisory Committee, and yes, it is a wonderful job, but a very, very difficult job. And as president emeritus of the uh, American Film Institute, and I'm particularly, personally, uh, touched to be here today because Charlton Heston was chair of the American Film Institute when I was appointed in 1980. And Chuck became a dear, dear friend uh, who I will uh, always remember and who we miss dearly. I think that these stamps are a masterful blending of film, Western heritage, and cowboy legends. Because they really, really speak to the heart of American life and culture. Of course, this is not the first time that the U.S. Postal Service has recognized the rich history of the West. Previously, stamps have been issued for a number of subjects, including the Pony Express, Wyatt Earp, Wild Bill Hickok, Annie Oakley, Buffalo Bill Cody, and your own native son, the rope and fool, Will Rogers. It's a joy to see these four gentlemen we honor today added to the philadelic trail of American commemorative stamps. Only in the United States would you find films linked to the pioneering spirit and fight for law and justice typified by the American Western. Stars like William S. Hart, Tom Nix, Gene Autry, and Roy Rogers all help to refine the art, the magic, and the adventure to be found in the Old West.